So if you're going to use pencil, think of it this way. Whatever pencil I put on the paper, I'm going to leave on the paper. And that way, it will cause you to use less strokes to state what you're doing. So I want, I do want my horizon here to speak up. And do want a couple of my levels to be pronounced and then as far as my tree goes I just want to know where he's coming from and then I'll define him with with, with paint and that's it that's all I'm going to do for uh, the paint the uh, the drawing portion of this I'm gonna mix up my colors and uh, Start just by adding some color. I want some really rustic, earthy colors. I'm not. Um, I'm not going after the colors at all in this painting. I'm literally going after the mood, and um, as such, I'm going to I'm gonna use some of these colors that are in my palette right now, just to kind of. Um, not waste them, you know, but um, I'll be adding to it. So I've got a, a deeper brown here, so I'm going to add some uh, sepia to it and get it even deeper. I want, I want a nice, dark, reliable, dark color. Whatever was in this, um, we'll just add to it. I think it was a sedimentary color, so it's going to add to it. See how thick it is? This is super thick because it's going to be my darkest dark. I'm going to go ahead and get a good amount of Quinacridone Sienna. You know, I got an announcement to make, guys. I went to go, I'm almost out of Quinacridone Sienna which is my favorite and most used color on my palette. And they want $16 a tube. So I went to uh, some of the big, you know, popular art stores and they want, you know, $13 a tube with $10 flat shipping. So that's $23 for one tube of paint or the $16 I could pay on Amazon to, you know, have it next day and no shipping. But uh, I don't remember ever paying $16 a tube for paint. So, a little alarming for sure. Get a nice yellow for the yellow blossoms. And, I'm gonna just mix pure yellow because I have these brown colors to rely on to darken them up if I need to. Just want a nice pure yellow. And go ahead and get my sky colors. I'm gonna put a little bit of thalo blue, red shade. A little goes a long way. I'm going to add a little bit of sienna to naturize it. So I have kind of a nature green, a nature blue, knuckered on sienna, um, brown. You know, I'm going to make a nice gray too. So I, I mix my gray by putting thalo turquoise with the lovely knuckered on magenta. And this I can get a nice Haynes blue. Look at that. Oof. So I take it to a nice purple color. Kind of a, a blue purple, deep blue purple. And then I add that famous Quinacrone Sienna. 
Okay, so I'm happy with these colors. I'm gonna get going on it. So for step one of this layered landscapes lesson, I wanna get a big angle shader brush. I'll go ahead and use the dirty water. And I want my sky, I wanna do a loose sky, but listen, I don't want my sky to be the main character. It doesn't get, it can be, but for today's painting, it's not going to be. So that's something to keep in mind. So I'm just going to take some water and um, I do get my corners wet, but I don't worry so much if there's some white areas in the sky. I call those windows. And I'm going to take, you know, that blue color. It doesn't look so blue. Anymore, does it? Let's add a little more blue. There we go. So I'm going to take this gray, put it in the corners have a little bit of drama maybe on the outskirts and then I'll put this blue in the other parts and then I'm going to mix those colors around a little bit I'm going to give it a little bit of a pathway out if it doesn't have one. There we go. Let me go ahead and send it out. And then I'm just deciding if it needs any more. And I really liked this drama. Now, if I go to drama, I'm going to have a storm, right? <laughs> So I don't necessarily want that, but I did like the color uh, blends Go like this. And then I'm going to let it set for just a minute and let those um, fibers on the paper really open up. Remember, this is a layered landscape demo. So this is a, a layer. This is going to be a layer of the landscape. And I don't want there to be two parts of the painting, so I'm completely okay if we have a little bit of a blend into the foreground. I don't mind at all. Um, I've learned if you just have these hard lines, especially when you're doing loose landscapes and stuff, it, it just doesn't work out to the best of best. Okay, now that it's set up, I'm gonna go really quick across these windows and hope that we get to keep some of that white. There we go. I'm gonna leave these ones dry and I'm gonna hold this at an angle. And this is gonna be my understated sky. So keep in mind that as it dries, it is going to have a dry shift not a whole lot because these are phthalo colors, and um, but there will be somewhat of a dry shift. Uh, so it's going to dry much lighter. So even though it looks quite dramatic right now, it'll dry lighter and the colors will continue to mix and mingle. I'm taking any of the paint off of the uh, tape line because I do not want any crazy um, backgrounds. If I get one, I'll just call it cloud, but I prefer not to have one. Like I said, I just want the sky to be pretty and soft. Go. There we go. So there's my sky. Isn't that pretty? <laughs> Let's see how it looks when it dries. Okay. So here's the dried sky. Isn't that pretty? Really pretty. And you can see where the violet and the thalo turquoise, the quinacrid and sienna, and the thalo turquoise. Did I say that? Let me say it again. <laughs> the quinacrid magenta, quinacrid sienna, thalo blue red shade, and thalo turquoise have these um, little color separations where you could see the purple in the sky, kind of like what Moon Glow does in a way, but without 
any worry about it being light fast because we know the Thalos and the Quins are, so isn't that pretty? I, I don't want to ruin it. <laughs> Anyways, so for part two of the layered landscape, we're going to concentrate on symbols. The symbols of the background foliage, but we want it to be really, really light and subdued. Again, this won't be the main character. Um, this will um, be behind the main character, so we don't want it to be too, too pronounced. But I'm gonna use um, I'm gonna use a round brush, and I'm going to, you know, what? I'm gonna use my half inch angle shade brush. And I'm gonna just uh, kind of roughly, and I want to keep that because that's kind of a cool. It's gonna roughly follow my hillside that I had planned. And again, I'm I'm leaving some windows, um, some areas that are to be white. And uh, I'm not going to worry too much about down here because this is the foreground. So um, I am going to try and be a little bit greener though, and maybe some dirt colors on this section. So I need to stir up my pigments though, so I don't mess up too bad. Maybe get a little bit more. Turquoise on that one. This is a nice green. Stir up my dark, dark umber. A little bit of this. And then my yellow. I might use a little bit of that. So I think I'm going to start with this muted green. It definitely needs some yellow. Put a little bit of yellow in there. You can also tone down green out of the red world with a little bit of uh, quinacridone sea. A little brown mix here. Not too much of this brown because um, here's the thing, I don't, I want the, I want this to be very subdued, kind of like a ghost in the background. So I'm gonna Give it a little bit of water so it knows where to go what to do that kind of thing and I'm not too worried about um, some areas being bright because there are gonna be um, you know some color um, separations there's gonna be some dry shift and uh, so I'm not too worried about that I just want enough coverage now I can go in and kind of make it a lot more irregular because this hillside is definitely not, you know, um, it's kind of like got these little mounds on it. That's just the way the foliage works out there. Now there is this little extra tree back here. We'll go ahead and we'll define him. doesn't have to have a whole lot but it can start adding some little mounds here and there where I want there to be a little bit of definition to the hillside And I also got to look at my negative here. Is, is this high enough or is this high enough? I think this needs to be higher. So I'm going to go ahead and bring it up. And I'm going to give it a little tiny bit of a... Yeah, that's cool. I'm just looking. Is there anywhere where we need just a couple little... Um, you know, I don't want to do too much of it. So if you feel like, oh no, I think it's too defined here, or it's too defined there, 
You can also take a, and just kind of do a little bit of a lost and found action too. Won't hurt anything to give it a little bit of sass. <laughs> and you can also, if you're worried about a line forming, you can just do that. Now we can bring those colors down. Just going to be a quiet background. What about down here, you might ask? We could put in some dark, some grasses, and let that kind of just happen. Right? going to be the foreground so it'll be you know more visible so we can do these great little grasses I've been using this brush it's kind of cool it is a, called a max round it's by King Art it's a part of their finesse series Should even do some rough brushing why not right and um, so it, it's kind of cool because it has a, a really fine tip. You know, you could even add a little bit of a gray in there if you wanted. So it has a really fine tip. And uh, so it kind of works like a round where you can, you know, use it as a round as well as a... Um, as well as a liner brush. So it's kind of cool. Roughly looking at the um, image, but not, not worrying about it too much. A couple little grasses here and there. get rid of this extra water it's up in the sky because we don't want to lose that dynamic sky do we it's just so beautiful so I'm gonna um, send the water that's extra on the paper down here and uh, one little area right here where I want it to be a little bit less defined. I like it. I just don't want it to be a focal point because I, I want, I just like I said, I don't want any of this. Now, as this is drying, I can go and take some That's a nice yellow, huh? Let's get a little bit more white. It's pretty. And now I'm not going to put a lot. I'm just going to do some dots to get some of these flowers started. Maybe 
some of these lighter areas. I'll just throw some yellow in there. Take advantage of it. And then I can um, later define them in a little different way if I wanted to. delicate, you know, how many you put in. See how that yellow is spreading and there's a lot going on. I don't think I lost my sky too, too much, but I'm going to keep reinforcing these areas of yellow. Part of my memory of this place, so I want them to be included, but I don't need them to be pronounced. Um, I'm okay with there just being these little push and pulls of yellow in the foreground. Um, doesn't have to be um, perfect. Still considering that there is a dry shift. And I'm gonna let that dry now. See how it turns out. Kind of cool. Kind of pretty, huh? Okay, so here it is wet. A lot going on. The, the landscape is kind of blended into the sky, so I'll probably need to better define that. But for right now, I'm just gonna let it dry just like it is. Really, really pretty painting so far. Okay, so this is my second layer of the landscape dried, and I literally could call this one a day. I think that is so beautiful, but this is class prep for my layered landscape workshop, so I gotta keep pushing it. <laughs> Nervous. Um, so I'm gonna just take a minute to really share this in case, um, you know, it doesn't work out. So, isn't that beautiful? I mean, I feel like uh, the viewer could look at it and decide what it is. Um, really, really pretty. I, it made me think of like if the heaven was kissing the earth and the two were becoming one. Really pretty. So now I'm going to add the main character. So I'm going to paint the tree a uh, bravura bravura <laughs> so with 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 um with confidence and with the belief that i can that i can do this in just brush strokes with confidence i'm going to be using this max round brush i i could grab my liner which i'm more secure with but i'm going to use this because i'm trying to learn it and I'm going to, I can barely see my um, pencil marks where I wanted my tree to land. So I'm going to get my trunk started. And right here I might just let the um, grasses kind of as if they um, you were know, coming out of the mountain there. <laughs> think that think that way that you want it to and I'll alternate my colors too so there's some shadow don't, don't be afraid don't feel like what if I mess up? What if I do this? What if I do that? Don't think like that. Think of um, I am creating this tree and I am going to do it in a way that is confident and I'm going to connect colors. 
So there's some continuation of that. And if it starts to get away from you, choke back on the brush. Don't, like as fine of a line as you can get it. Go. Don't be afraid to add a little warmth to it in spots if you want to. That's where some of these branches kind of go back on themselves even. Here there's a couple that are just uh oh, I went thick. Gotta be careful not to do that too much because unless I add a thick branch, right? Let's go ahead and Brevera, Brevera, I think I like the tree this a little bit. Thicker. You do this to compensate. You know, why is that this way or this that way? Another thing you can do is if you have an area where you're a little bit in doubt, you could always do a washout to show you that in just a second. Um, I'm trying to get the majority of the branches to find. this tree like taking over but there's another tree maybe he will help tell the story a little bit get to don't be afraid to add some variation in the color trees here you know if uh, you have a tree that's not making sense you're like nope mm -mm, I don't like the way that one's looking at a tree then you could even add some blue in a couple places why not not up and out but you know this is some beat up old desert tree this isn't like it's um some beautiful park tree. That's something to think about too when you're doing these desert scenes is that, you know, sometimes we think that they're supposed to be these like perfectly shaped trees. And other, you know, if you really look out in the desert, there are some jacked up looking trees. They are just, 
there is not <laughs> the best of shape. Um, you know, maybe we want one that literally goes. page there. Don't, you know, remember Berbera. Yes, Berbera. Think of, you know, think of those broken down little trees that just uh, lost all their leaves and I'm not quite sure. where they're going, what they're doing. Think about the um, foliage down here too. No, because this is your foreground, right? So we could bring some green into this. tree. Maybe the sun's catching it in a couple of places. You never know, right? It doesn't all have to be sad, does it? I feel like it needs a little bit more of this dark over here. Remember, Bravura, Bravura. <laughs> Bravura, Bravura. Yes. Broke down tree. Doesn't get enough water. It's drought, um, the birds of the field go there, right? Maybe there's even some of these guys, right? Some like curly, cute branches that don't really make sense at all, but add just that little something to, to the um, painting. Not all branches have to be perfectly straight, do they? And still thinking about this foreground. Even just like that. Get those yellows in there to represent those flowers. Right? I like if there's dark going up for some dark to be going down too. So I'm going to have you know, as if there is literally shadow from this tree traveling out on the bottom here. And it might make sense to the eye, it might not. I don't really, it doesn't really matter to me. Um, not all the grasses of the field need to be represented, right? We could have some flowers in this way too. here to um, offset and then maybe we'll 
just bring this hillside here just up a little bit. You don't want it to be too much, otherwise you might lose what you're trying to say. A couple little blend outs are always kind of a neat way to loosen it up if it got a little away from you. Now we want to kind of keep this dynamic going up. Taking this hillside back down a little bit, keeping some of these windows fresh, and uh, don't want to lose too much of this background because it's real pretty. So just going to grasses, but we don't really know. Okay, though. Right. Yeah, that's really pretty. Do a little bit of an upward down here. off kind of like finishing off that foreground there and I'm just gonna do a couple of barely kisses here because um, there's some kisses over here so if there's kisses over here there should be kisses over there and I'm good I'm good with that that is a moody tree it's got a lot going on behind it in the sky so there's like movement you know coming in this way and movement coming in that way and I think just letting it be and letting it dry at this point would be great all right so here is that final dried piece and so I'm just going to add a couple little touches like the very final touches um, I think it came out really pretty I was thinking about possibly having some of these tree branches, but I think I'm going to leave it. Because I did it with brush strokes, I think I'm going to leave it and let it be my brush strokes and not try and make it perfect. Um, I do, I, I made this little stencil to hand out to my students this Saturday, so I did want to have just a couple of these little touches in there. I'm really excited about this painting. It's come out pretty. So I'm just going to get my toothbrush. And I'm going to do this in, um, get some clean water for it. Believe it or not, when you're doing the stencil lifting technique, clean water is important. Especially when you have this much paint on the paper. And I'm going to have to do a little scrubbing because these are all quinacridone and thalos. So I'm not sure how much it's going to lift. I think I'll just do a couple of guys right there. I 
could do this to different degrees. You know, you could press down and do you know, a heavier scrub in some places and then a lighter scrub in other places. Pull it off quickly. Let's get over here. And, oh yeah, that's cool. Whole countryside was just covered in flowers this day. So it's kind of cool to have some of that repeated in this foreground. And I'll say this is my final layer, just doing these little touches to uh, add just that extra layer. Pretty. And I really like the Thalos and Quinn's too because it doesn't lift all the way back to the white of the paper. It's kind of the stained look, which I think is really, really pretty. Um, for instance, I could have, you know, I could establish more of the foreground here if I wanted to. Or I could do a couple of these guys right there. Have to do a whole lot too. You know, you could do a minimal amount of this so as not to take away from the spontaneous, but I like how that connects with those. That's really pretty. It's a cute little stencil, isn't it? Um, let's see. Pop him right there would be cute. Like, I think this guy's too big, um, but maybe I'll just kind of do a couple off this way. I'm not sure. So now I have captured that there were some flowers in the fields that day. You know, just kind of defined it a little bit more. Just really subtle, no big deal. You know, just a little something, just that little touch. Yeah, I think, I think that does it. So you have the softness of the flowers along Wow, I'm really happy with this painting. Um, let me know what you think. Let me know your thoughts on it. Um, yeah, I think it really, you know, obviously I had quite a bit of artistic license. <laughs> and, um, but here was my inspiration. Some rolling hills, a wispy sky, some wild flowers. And I have my version of the rolling hills, wispy sky, and wildflowers. <laughs> Thanks for watching, you guys. Be sure to leave me a comment and a hello. And um, if you want to, you can stop by my Instagram at Watercolor Pour and give me a follow. And just leave me a comment that you came over from YouTube so I can follow you back. Happy painting.